Hi, I'm Graham Blackburn, and this is Traditional Woodworking by Hand. And in our continuing new series illustrating this particular book, we've now got to the point where we're going to be talking specifically about all the many different planes that you need to do traditional non-electric woodworking. And today's episode is all about the jack plane. If you're just starting woodworking, you'd be surprised at how much you can get done with how few tools. Basically, you just need a hammer, a saw, and maybe a chisel or two. Uh, and of all the planes that there are, and you can see a lot behind me, and we'll talk about them in future episodes, the single most useful plane is the jack plane. Here is a selection of jack planes. They're, what they have in common is that they're all about 16 to 18 inches long. And they're the planes that you can use for a variety of jobs, which is partly, I guess, why they're called jack planes, they're the jack of all trades. They can be used for smoothing wood, flattening wood, shaping wood. They can be, be used for doing the first things that you have to do if you're going to make a piece of furniture. Here's an example of something you might find at a flea market. This is a traditional late 19th century wooden jack plane. It's missing a strike pin. It's in a terrible condition, but it's got a nice double iron, which I'll show you in a minute. We'll take it out. Um, and if you found one of those for five twenty bucks, I would totally recommend that you bought it and fixed it up because for the quality of the iron alone it's worth the money here's a wooden jack plane one that i use most of the time this is actually a little special because the back of the stock has been relieved which makes it called a razi plane it just makes it a little easier to push forward here I don't have a Stanley uh, jack plane, although Stanley made every plane known under the sun. But here's a modern version of a Stanley type plane. This is a very expensive Lee Nielsen tool. It has all the features that a Stanley plane would have, but they're all made to a much higher quality. Here is probably the prince of all jack planes. This is the kind of plane known as a, a stuffed plane because it has a three-part metal sole and then it's stuffed with exotic wood and it also has a really really good quality iron so let's take a quick look at what these planes do the first thing that you might use a jack plane for if you were starting from scratch is to take a piece of wood that you at the sawmill or that you found on a dump heap or whatever and the first thing you'd need to do is to make it flat here is a really bad piece of wood but you can see that by using the jack plane what the jack plane does is take off the high spots and if I continue to do this I would eventually end up with a board that was completely flat and more or less smooth by the way, at this point, I'd like to repeat the use of two pieces of wood that you can make yourself, that if they're the same size, you put one at one end and you put one at the other end. And by sighting across the top, because the far one has a line of paint on it, it's easy to see whether in fact the board is straight and not twisted and i can do that at different points down here and wherever these are not perfectly parallel that's where i take a little bit off anyway that's probably the first thing that you might want to do with a jack plane to make a piece of wood basically flat you can also use a jack plane to make 
or at least start making the edge of a board perfectly flat. I'll use my most common jack plane and before I actually use it, I want you to notice that it's designed for three fingers and in use, I use it skewed because if I go forward with the plane skewed, it'll take a shaving, but it's only the edge, the leading edge that is hitting the wood first. That's much easier than asking the entire blade to take a shaving all at once. So I push here, I'm holding down here, and this is the plane that I use to take the edge off something. I can do the same thing with my expensive the Nielsen plane. Uh, and I can set the blade nicely, but you can see it takes nice shavings. I can do the same thing with my Matheson plane. But remember, it's really important and useful to remember, hold the plane somewhat skewed. Now, this plane is much heavier, and I can set the iron much more nicely. And you can notice that the shaving that I'm taking is as wide as the board. And when I take a shaving, given that I know the sole is flat, the entire length of the board, I know that it's straight. I don't necessarily know that it's at the right angle. For that reason, I use a shooting board. And as I've said several times before, there are very few hand tools that you use unaided. If I know that the sole of my plane is perfectly perpendicular to the side, then by putting the workpiece on the shooting board, I can do this without even looking, and this will guarantee that not only do I get a perfectly straight edge, but I get a perfectly square edge. And I would use the shooting board with any of these planes here. Now let's take a little closer look at these jack planes. The wooden ones are a little obscure if you've never seen one before. Unlike the modern ones that have all these screws and nuts and things that make it pretty obvious how you take things apart, this is not so obvious. You'll notice that right now the wedge and the iron are firmly in, in the sole here. The way to get them out is not by twisting like that, that runs the risk of damaging the side of the planes, but by simply hitting the strike pin. I can do that with a mallet, or I can do better. You can see a lot of people here have used a hammer, but here it's firm. If I do this, then now this comes out. It's simple ergonomics. Similarly, to adjust the plane, I push the wedge in, and if I want the blade to take a deeper cut, so I was working on this piece here. I simply tap the front of the plane. And that causes the plane to take a much thicker shaving. If I want to retract the blade, I simply hit the back of the plane. And I think that was too big of a hit. Now it won't take any shaving at all. But that's the adjustment of a wooden plane. Two important things. Keep the sole perfectly flat and keep it perpendicular to the side. And then when you use a shooting board, you can get the edge not only straight, but square. Now, let's look a little more closely at the irons of all of these. Because if you sharpen the iron properly, no matter how thick a shaving you take, you need to be able, you want to be able, to plane any piece of wood in any direction. Forget that nonsense that you may have heard that you should always plane with the grain. Wood is not that convenient. Very often the grain goes in all sorts of different directions. But planes are designed, if they're properly set up, to plane in any direction. Let's look at the bottom of this plane. You can see it's pretty old. You can see it's been screwed through. You can also see that in the front here, 
another piece of wood has been inserted to close up the gap between the front of the cutting edge and the back of the front of the sole. Theoretically, and this is especially true of smoothing planes like this plane here, which also has been remouthed, that's the term for that, the gap here should be no wider than the thickness of the shaving. If it is wider, it simply allows that shaving that you cut to dig into the wood, especially if you're going against the grain. But the cleverness of the design of these planes is that by keeping this gap narrow, and then by taking the iron out, I'll show you what this looks like, you'll see that, especially in these older planes, not only is the iron itself much thicker, which makes it easier to sharpen, as I'll show you in a second, but it also has another piece. This is called the cap iron. And if we take off the cap iron, I can show you what it does. Just loosen it like this, push it back, take it out. And you'll see that the cap iron is also sharpened. What that does is when it's perfectly fitted, meaning that it sits right against the back of the blade, and if I hold it up to the light and I try and look between them, I can see no light between here. That means that every shaving that comes through the mouth is immediately broken by the cap iron, assuming that the mouth of the plane is sufficiently narrow. So one great advantage of the older and less expensive planes is that they have these much thicker irons which are so much easier to sharpen because if you use a sharpening stone that you've made nice and flat, just with enough pressure with one finger in the middle of the blade is enough to keep the entire bevel on the stone. And what I do is not pressing only firmly enough to keep the blade in contact, I sharpen on the stone and you can see the black coming off until I can see the marks left by whatever grade stone I'm using. And this is like a thousand grit stone across the entire width of the bevel. The moment I can do that, the last thing I want to do is to feel that there's a burr, is I place this flat on the stone and I wear off that burr, right? Now, in order to take a shaving that doesn't leave grooves at the end, at, the, at both edges, I need to curve this. And depending on whether I'm going to use my jack plane for really, really rough work and I want to take big shavings, or whether I want to use my jack plane for fairly finished work, I make a bigger or a shallower curve. And I do that by simply moving my fingers first to one side. And actually, if I take a rag and clean this, you'll see this even better. Take that off, give it some lubrication. And you'll see that when I do this, just pressing so it's flat, you can see the amount of metal that comes off, right? It's showing you that that works. To make a curve, I simply move my fingers to one side and take a few strokes here. And you can see the metal is being worn off here. And then I move my fingers to the other side and do the same thing. And depending on how much I do that, I make a bigger or a smaller curve. If I'm going to use this plane, Plane something really rough like this piece of wood, it helps to make a fairly substantial curve. But if I'm using the plane for finish work, where I've got the wood flat, I just want to remove all last marks, I make that a very slight curve. So slight that, in fact, if I sighted across the top, I wouldn't be able to see it. 
But the proof would be that when I took a shaving, the shaving, no matter how thin it was in the middle, would disappear to nothing at the edges and the surface of the wood would be perfectly smooth. This process is also true of these very expensive stuffed planes and to a lesser extent to the more expensive contemporary Neil Nielsen planes. So that's a brief introduction to the jack plane that will do everything from basically flattening and smoothing a rough piece of wood to giving you a final surface and a straight edge, especially in conjunction with something like a shooting board. It really is a jack of all trades. If you're starting woodworking and you only have one plane, then whether you buy a $20 flea market plane or whether you buy a $200 Lee Nielsen, the jack plane is the first plane to have. Something I forgot to tell you right at the beginning is that if you want to watch more of these episodes, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. That way you'll get notified when there's a new episode. And if you press the like button, you'll be able to make comments. And I'm more than happy to answer questions and to help you along in your adventure of fine woodworking. So thanks very, very much for watching. And I hope to see you soon. Thank you.